all of us need to be liberated from our culture to a certain extent because education is a kind of uh, necessary evil and when the process of education or acculturation has been completed we need a cure for it <clears throat> education is like salting meat in order to preserve it for eating but when you're ready to cook it and eat it you need to soak some of the salt out so in the process of being brought up by one's parents and one's teachers you are in one way spoiled although in another way made tolerable to live with and so in our culture it's increasingly fashionable to have psychoanalysis when you finish with education so as to uh, work out and resolve all the damage and traumatic shocks that were done to you in the process and it's becoming something that uh, in sophisticated circles one goes through not because you're a mentally sick person but because it's considered beneficial to general mental health and this is our uh, fumbling attempt you see to find a cure for our own culture we need a cure of course because the thing that we lose in the course of being brought up is spontaneity that's what's so delightful about a child as well as so objectionable that uh, children are just plain spontaneous and when they do it in a way that pleases us we think they're delightful and when we do, they do it in a way that doesn't please us we think they're horrid and so we pretty much kill the spontaneity in them in order to get certainly that they won't be horrid and that they will be nice but in a rather phony way and this is such a disaster isn't it because when we watch a child say dancing and it's never learned to never had a single dancing lesson and is really just dancing for fun we say that's delightful then uh, eventually the child notices that this is a way of getting attention and becomes self-conscious about dancing and then we send it to dancing school and it becomes stiff and wretched and only after many many years of practice does the child as a dancer now a young man or woman recapture the spontaneity of childhood it's got to go all that long way around to get back to the thing that it once had and it's terribly difficult so in the same way with the you might say the general attitude to life a child is taught to live as a child is taught to dance it has to observe the rules and in so doing this thing arises that bugs us human beings beyond belief that is self-consciousness self-consciousness is in one sense our pride as human beings it's the great thing we have we can not only be happy but we can know we're happy we can not only think but we can think about thinking therein lies the whole possibility of reasoning to think about thinking to know about knowing to be aware of what one does herein is the whole birth of a rational control of behavior which you might say is the glory of civilization and the glory of man but at the same time it's a perfect pest because how do you know when to stop thinking about thinking for instance you think over a problem you've got to make a decision how long should you think about it how much evidence should you collect before you take a step you never know actually what most of us do is we think about a given decision until it's a nuisance and then we all the time is too late to think about it anymore then we do something uh, we never are sure that we decided the right thing and the one of the troubles about thinking about decisions is there are all so many ever so many unpredictable variables that come into everything and you may wait, work out the most perfect business contract and everything is fine but you didn't bargain for the banana skin that you were going to slip on on your way to the to your partner's office or whatever it was uh, such things couldn't be predicted in any amount of decision making and the more we try to elaborate perfectly foolproof methods of uh, arranging our lives the more we find ourselves encumbered with impossible details that's the fallacy of too much law when we provide for everything in the law suddenly find you can't move without filling out 300 forms and without consulting all sorts of bureaucrats without hiring a staff of lawyers and accountants and all kinds of things to be sure you don't make the wrong move after a while the game ceases to be worth the candle I mean, life becomes so safe that it's not worth living at all.
So this is one of the problems of being self-conscious. And all education, you see, is an instruction in self-consciousness. What do you learn in education? You learn fundamentally words. In other words, symbols about reality. And through words, we're able to talk about living. And so think about living. And so have knowledge about it. You see, no knowledge is ac academically respectable knowledge unless it's knowledge in terms of words or in terms of numbers. That is to say, in terms of a symbolic language about life. But you see, once you're in that position, once you know that you know, and you know you're alive, and you know you're going to die because you can predict, you feel you've lost your innocence. Something's gone wrong. It's not exactly moral good and evil that was known as a result of eating the fruit of the tree, but what was advantageous and disadvantageous. It gave you the gift of being like God. That is to say, the gift of being able to control the course of events. And anybody who controls the course of events, you see, probably puts himself in the situation of the sorcerer's apprentice. The Lord looking down there and says, okay, you wanted to be God, man, you go ahead and try. <laughs> you get in more and more of a mess. You know, you succeed amazingly. Just like uh, the sorcerer's apprentice actually made that broom go and fetch water for it. But he couldn't stop it. And as we say today, you can't stop progress. Then the whole problem of self-consciousness is that you're always in a dither and a doubt. We call this anxiety. And a nostalgia develops among us for the age of innocence. Would it be nice not to have to make any decisions, to act entirely on whim? And if you got into trouble, well, that would be all right, because you wouldn't have been worrying about it. And so you might imagine a human civilization where people make mistakes, and yes, they go off with a glorious bang instead of a whimper. And that's that. They wouldn't worry. They'd live magnificently. But we can't possibly go back and do that. You can't, on purpose, give up self-consciousness. You can't give up worrying. You can't uh, give up thinking about yourself. And above all, you're terrified to live spontaneously, because you might do something wrong.